Greetings Internet, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 6.5 of my walkthrough of the demo of part 3 of Mohmus Quest Paradox RPG. This time we entered the Maol Castle with Elias as our companion. Like on the Alice side, you'll need to deliver Lacroix's notes to her. This time I did that off screen. Elias has about the same thing to say here. It's surprisingly common if you do it side li by side like I have. This magic box, for instance, is exactly the same except for six and a half characters. In effect, Elias says, let's confirm, where Alice said, I shall confirm. But let's skip ahead to more substantial differences. Anything left undone? Something left undone or march in the Maul Castle? No, nothing. Let's head on in. So you've come, hero party, but I cannot welcome you here. We expect no such thing from you. If you will obstruct our path, we'll make you yield by force. Then let us fight. If you want to meet the Mao, then you'll have to defeat me first. Now here an enemy mentions the Mao. On the Alice side, the Mao Alice sees the 15th died at the end of part two, and Luca learns about it from Morgan. You might assume that she died on the Elias side too, but we didn't hear about it because Morgan hadn't joined our party. But now we got Yao here mentioning her. So is she alive or dead? Or has she been replaced by a 16th? Well, we'll just have to find that out. Eventually. Phew, what power! Yao loses consciousness and falls in place. Sleep there for a while. From the beginning you must have known you couldn't defeat us anyway. Proceeding further, evil monsters will impede us. Of course, the Shiten no will should be standing in our way. However, do not be daunted. We shall challenge the Mao and put an end to her vile plan. So there's one gameplay difference. Yao doesn't join your party if you're playing on the Ilias side. So onward. If you go to El Betier's room, Ilias says that the Shiten no live in squalor so that the Mao can live in luxury. That's decidedly different from the explanation we get from from Alice, who says that El Betia just likes it down by the waterway. You can decide for yourselves what on that one, but we've got a treasure room to raid. <laughs> what naughty children trying to sneak your way into the treasure room? Hmm, I remember you. We are the three black nobles. Oh, it seems that you know of us. Back in the other world, they, she took a moment to introduce herself because we hadn't recognized them. Anyway, yeah, we fought these three 500 years ago, parallel world. Just what is this? These people should not exist in the present, though. So, events in the parallel world affect our singularity world. Same story here. Either way, it looks like we have to fight them again. And you three, why are you always in their treasure room? Intruders would not normally pass this way. Okay, I gotta object. We're intruders, and we always pass this way. So it's not that uncommon. Now, uh, we like to take tea breaks. Blah, blah, blah. You are slacking off to the utmost, are you not? The slothful must be punished. Yeah, punish away. No way for us to be defeated. We retreat. Hey, don't you get the feeling this has happened before? We promise you a rematch. Oh, this feels like a rematch itself. Mm-hmm, they're completely confused as well. They got caught up in a twist of space-time. How pitiable of them. So they retreat. 
Hmm. To have suffered at our hands twice. Well, let's help ourselves to the treasures. And these three yuck it up about yoinking treasures. But this time the three black nobles don't join our party. And that about covers all the differences in gameplay between the Alice side and the Elias side. But as long as we're here, let's go through the Sheeten Null fights, Magic Healing Circle, and Tamamo. Jeez, to think that you would get this far. But I won't let you have your audience with the Mao. Thinking upon it, we have a bizarre relationship with you. As an enemy leader in the Holy Wars, you trifled with my army. On the other hand, you came to assist us in the Battle of Garangold. And finally, we've lended you a hand in your mission to suppress the rebellions. It is true, we do have a checkered history, don't we? I too didn't think we'd relate like this. But in the end, you are the Dark God's follower. It is our fate to fight. Yes, that is the case, isn't it? Even with our queer bond, I won't go easy on you. We too shall show no leniency. To crush the Maol's plan, I'll see you defeated here. <laughs> Jeez, I've utterly lost, haven't I? What's wrong? You won't finish me off? You're holding one final ace up your sleeve, aren't you? If we make you pull it out, it will be troublesome, even for us. Yeah, she doesn't want to pull it out and we don't want to deal with it. Win-win right there. Furthermore, ultimately you intend to have us meet the Mao, do you not? My eyes are not deceived. If you were to lose to me, that would have been the end of it, though. Not even denying it troublemaker. Anyway, with this I'm defeated, but Elbetia and Granberia still remain. Hmm. If they are coming, let them come. We shall handily defeat those remaining two as well. Well, you go do your best. Then, I'll see you later. Tamamo disappears herself. Still two bosses of the same level. This'll be tough. I'm so excited! Elias Sama's enemies. I'll show no mercy. You two are both so reliable. So then, let's keep doing our best. So, still got Shi Tendo waiting, no mistake. Let's continue. Ah. Uh, these two again. This place is... So the conversation is largely the same. But there are some differences. Just what exactly is this? Can you hear my voice? Through another dimension I am accessing your consciousness. That voice, I remember. You are... Booyah. Child of Judgment, Luca, you recall meeting me before. Allow me to reintroduce myself again. I am Raffaella, one of the seven archangels presiding over protection. I see. You are an emissary from the other world where I roll. Do you not think yourself tardy in greeting me? Easy, Alice. Do you really think you're so important? Oh yeah, I guess she does. Truly, I'm sorry, Ilyasama, but I do have a programmer to follow, you see. Then, you should already be aware of our world. Heaven. That is the name we have given our world. The parallel world where the goddess Helios fully triumphed over the dark god. That is called Heaven. Under Elias Sama, we are, we are promised the greatest good for the greatest number. That is the paradise that we inhabit. 
the world that another me governs. The beauty of it I can just picture. Yes, additionally, Elias Sama. The day that we show you to our world is now at hand. Elias Sama shows to the people their paths one by one. Those paths are how they can live the happiest, each of them. By showing them their path, depending on their abilities and preferences, everybody is satisfied. They are promised a society where they live happily. But for everything to be determined by Elias Sama, in that world, is there no freedom of choice? Alice made this objection in her own words, on the Alice side. To eliminate choices that make themselves unhappy, is that a denial of freedom? Again, yeah. Law and order also exists in your society, does it not? You too must be living in obedience to the framework of society. Do you also consider that a denial of freedom? No, you must not. In contrast to that, how about the world where the Dark God rules? To call it a world of complete freedom, it sounds good, doesn't it? But the truth of it is, it is a world without proper laws, governed by the law of the jungle. With the strong ruling over the weak, it becomes a hell of covetousness. Can an honest person live in a world like that? Who will defend the weak and the needy? In our world, Elias Sama protects the weak. A path is shown to every type of person and they are promised happiness. Sonia, I understand your concern. But with excessive freedom will, without fail, bring about the exploitation of the weak. Certainly that is true. Ah, uh, Sonia, you're a pushover. But, destruction approaches our world. You must be aware, all the worlds face an extinction crisis. The Dark God world intends to save only their own world, no matter the cost. So, they are trying to destroy our world. On the occasion of this crisis, we initiated the Ark Plan. From the various worlds, we choose those who ought to survive and save them. But, to choose who will survive? Couldn't we somehow save everybody? And here Lucas steps in for an objection Alice made. He doesn't accuse Raphael of self-righteousness, though. We cannot save everyone. Our world, too, has a limit to the population it can support. But, don't you know of the plan the Dark God is advancing? It is truly the epitome of evil. They will annihilate the people of all the parallel worlds, and even the worlds themselves. And they will draw those souls into their own world. In truth, it is a plan alike to devils. We have seen with our own eyes just how much pain and suffering it has borne. Again, on the other side, Raphaela had to point out that we've seen people suffer at the hands of the three succubi and the other Tamamo. But this time, Elias. It is as you say, Elias Sama, this plan of the Dark's gods. We absolutely must crutch it. Child of Judgment, the time of the great decision is already approaching before your eyes. The goddess Elias Sama will accept you, making the righteous decision, and your allies. And she will bestow her blessings upon you. Follow the guidance of the goddess, child of judgment, Luca. We've returned, it looks like. Raffaella. Truly an intellectual, likable angel, isn't she? 
Though there is a need to rectify that indecent appearance. Says the girl is wandering around with a naked Eden all the time. Luca, already your path is as good as decided. Following me and the additional goddess, you shall kill the dark god. Mm hmm. Well, on to the next sheet, Enmo. That wasn't long. You shall not pass. As expected, you stand in a, the way, El Betier. And I recall, now you have Kanade cells residing in you. Don't you know the Dark God's plan? I've been entrusted with its final endgame. I'll draw in all the world's life forms. Integrate them. Then I'll self-destruct, releasing the souls to the Dark God's world. Yep, we went over this in the Cockroach Rebellion event. Although, again, for plot reasons it makes sense you'd explain it here in case we skipped. I have already made my resolution. And so, I will eliminate the Dark God's enemies without mercy. I will take you in as well, all of you. Then you can live in the Dark God's world. We refuse. We'll defeat you, making the Dark God's plan to collapse. As expected, we can't avoid a fight, huh? So then, let's go. That conversation was significantly different. Well, Tom almost, too, come to think of it. Anyway. <clears throat> My body's integration is still... Taking Kanade's cells into your body. It seems like it wasn't such a good thing after all. Leave us now, El Betier. You've received orders to pull out if defeated even anyway, have you not? Ugh. Truculent bitch. El Betier leaves. For you, Ilya-sama. You let her go so easily. I thought you would finish her off here. Kanade is, among the six ancestors, ancestors, the one with the highest vitality. In her body there reside hundreds of millions of life forms, after all. El Betie, having those cells residing in her, already is no longer a monster of this world. Killing her entirely, root and branch, is impossible with our power now. Come, let us proceed onwards. The only remaining Shiten no is Grambelia. Grambelia, huh? She is most likely the most outstanding swordsman in the world. Even so, right now she is arboring a deep indecision. But we're just going to fight through with our, all our power no matter who the opponent is. And so we took another step onwards. Uh, another dimension? Is this the same place as before? Rafaela? No, it seems not. This presence filled with darkness, I remember it. Boom. I am one of the six Angus ancestors, Saja. From the world ruled by the Dark God, the Demon World, I have come. The Demon World. That's the parallel world where the Dark God triumphed over the Goddess. I am not here in substance. I am not more than a phantasmal guide for your course. But with the great decision upon you, I shall guide you, destroyer of worlds, Luca. Saja, like I thought. What do you mean, calling Luca destroyer of worlds? That boy houses a great destiny. His mission is to extinguish an evil world as a destroyer. I will? 
No way. But that itself is the key to saving all the worlds. Unifying all the parallel worlds into one, you erect a perfect world. Perfect world? Do you refer to the world ruled by the Dark God? A hell ruled by vice and violence. Do you call that salvation? The Dark God does not rule. Everything is entrusted to the people who reside therein. It is a vigorous society, overflowing with a free and broad-minded ethos. That is the world that the Dark God desires. Huh. Saying free and broad-minded is a glib expedient. Under such a master, the people are treated as, as it pleases her. In the end, it will be that the strong rule the weak. Such a world under the law of the jungle, that's what the Dark God desires. Well, the strong don't rule the weak in your world. After all, you do rule everything. Hmm. Elias, then, what of the world ruled by the other you? They say that everybody lives in happiness under the will of God, but the people of that world are puppets robbed by God of the free will to make decisions. The people believe themselves happy while their right to live free is stolen. Such a thing is not more than the utopia of slaves. And the people who aren't chosen are eliminated without mercy. There's not a scrap of tolerance in that ruthlessly oppressive society. Rules are necessary for society. If, it, if there aren't strict rules, the people will become cruel to no end. For that reason, people need the guidance of God. The way that the Dark God does things is nothing other than a doctrine of irresponsible neglect. Elias, the people are wiser than you think them to be. Given self-awareness and responsibility, they will be at peace without need of rule. But. That rule world of ours also draws near to destruction. As you know, all the parallel worlds are at the point of an extinction crisis. The only method to escape destruction is the unification of all the parallel worlds. For that purpose, we must make our world into a unique and stable singularity world. But the Dark God shall not forsake the people of other parallel worlds. We'll lead their souls into our world and realize unification. Unification of souls, you call it. That means nothing more nor less than the massacre of the parallel worlds. In the process of the plan, brutal behavior cannot be avoided. But taking their lives is not more than a transitory step. The soul, separated from the body, undergoes unification in our world. In the world become one, they can experience their lives as their essential selves. Know that it is not killing, but the work of transferring souls. All the souls will be saved and return to the Dark God's world. That is sophistry. Then, what of you, Elias? The Ark plan only saves the Chosen Ones. Abandoning the great majority of the people and leaving them to the collapse of their worlds. Is your way not greatly cruel? Do you not think it self-righteous? The Dark God will save everyone's souls. Unlike you, who will abandon the masses. Although few in number, salvation of both body and soul is my method, at least saving those who should be saved. What is mistaken about that? 
as the Dark God would do, saving only souls and discarding the bodies. Everyone should not be divided in two like that. Destroyer of Worlds, Luca. The great decision approaches before your eyes. Will you become the sword of the Dark God and see through the unification of a perfect world? Or will you support the Goddess and forsake many people? There is no pondering over which you will choose. The Dark God is waiting for you. Smug. We've returned. Luca, Saja called you the destroyer of worlds. To execute their plan, precisely as she said, you must become a destroyer of worlds. Luca, positively do not lend your ear to the whispers of demons. Under my guidance, you must save the righteous. Not so easy a choice, hmm? One last sheet and no. Blarg. <clears throat> so, you've come. Rambelia, as I thought, you are the last one standing in our way. Before you is the Mao's throne room. If you want to proceed, defeat me and go. It is evident you are lacking in spirit. Do you think that you can win against us in that state? Certainly I've been racking up losses. But this time, I'll seize victory. I too have a reason I can't back down now. Let's go, Grambelia. So I've lost again. <laughs> Each time we meet, you've grown you've been growing weaker. How about you try retraining yourself up from zero once? Is she actually considering advice from the goddess? Well I suppose it's not bad advice. Oh, here we go again. Before I knew it, my liege, Alice Fees the Sixteenth, was chased off the throne. Then my liege became the prior monarch, Her Majesty the Fifteenth. She's all fifteenth and sixteenth like she doesn't want to actually say their names. It, although they do have the same name, so that would be a problem, wouldn't it? The Shi Tenno of the Mao Ho army are, naturally, there to serve the Mao. But the 16th, to whom I pledged my allegiance, was now a vagrant. To serve the 15th, the proper Mao, or to serve, follow the 16th, chased out of the position. My heart wavered and vacillated. Working for a master you don't want. Certainly, I can sympathize with you on that situation. Aiden? Haven't you always served the master you want? And you sent the boss here? Odd. And further, the orders I received from the 15th were exceedingly incomprehensible. It was like I was receiving orders I couldn't understand and, and cutting down innocent people. Because they are my liege's orders, I don't get to question the reasons of them. That's how a warrior should be. But I couldn't devote myself to be my liege's sword. My sword was disturbed, and my losses piled up. My fight against that one called the 17th was also, in effect, a loss. Alice is the 17th, that's Nellis. That person, I don't know why, knew my sword thoroughly. No. It was as though she had learned the techniques and then gone on to expand them. That's when I felt it. Couldn't it be that my sword had gotten old, I felt. And 
hero, Luca. I crossed swords with you several times. I sensed that yours was a sword filled with youth, with the future. In contrast to that, the stagnation of my sword, I felt like I had gained decades of age. Though only halfway through your twenties, your spirit has aged that much. In that sorry stage, you won't win even when you could. Salamanda Shisho. Once again, I want to retrain myself under you. I refuse. I told you, your power is already greater than mine. But... Seeing how you fought just now, your skill with the sword hasn't really dulled. In which case, what you lack... You know what it is, isn't it, don't you? Yes. That's not something you can train under a master. It's something that you discover, looking deep into yourself. Suck it! Now, just this once, look at yourself anew. Understood, Shisho. Since we're here and all, I'll give you, I will give you an evaluation too. Listen and take it to heart. All of this, Grambelia, is extremely pathetic. As of now, that lizard there is much stronger than you. She's talking about Salander, Salamander. As to the this and that of your spirit, it is as the burning lizard says. Since the problem is not in your body or your sword, yet the problem is in your heart. Isn't there still a power within you that you abhor? To avoid that too is to avert your eyes from yourself. You don't mean the magical girl power? That, that's... Anything but that. <laughs> what are you saying, you Nimrod? You are not to avert your eyes from your powers. Without regard for the mechanism, that too is your own appearance. To deny that is the same as denying yourself. Th but... It's so gross, after all. Can you now... Be fussy with about your power or not. Once again, you should reconsider it all. So then go now, Grambelia. Also, don't forget it th that a fleeing lizard leaves its tail behind. God, you're such an asshole. But this time it's definitely the right choice. <coughs> Goodbye. Grandelia leaves. She's left. I wonder if she's alright. If she took my words seriously and really came out as a magical girl, wouldn't that be funny? You, you're cruel. Oh no, no, she deserves it. Well, she might need to break through her misgivings that much. She's tormenting herself too much right now. Anyway, we have things we need to do. Come, let's proceed onward. Already the Maul's throne sits before our eyes. Resolve yourselves and let us go. With this, we were proceeded to the Maul's throne room. The time of the great decision approached. Well, it was easier to sit through that without having, hearing her talk about Marcellus killing the Mao. Come to think of it, is the Mao dead? Well, 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 it appears not. Again, warning in the trial version, you can't not save beyond this point. But, Alice Fee is the 15th. No mistake there. I know the real reason is the game design. Every monster girl needs to be fightable. 
I think maybe Alice and Elias are the only ones we have not found a way to fight along the course of our journey. Except the ones that are obviously in the future, like Raphael and Saja. But even if it's gameplay reasons, it's fun to complicate the little butterfly effect type of series of events that would have delayed Marcellus in this one instance, but not the other. But anyway, that wraps up this video. In the next part, I'll run through the great decision, including all of the endings. I have a feeling it's going to be a long one. So for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>